So during the 1950s then, and I just want to go back briefly to the courts that you visited and worked at the most, you didn't, I gather, have too much to do with the courts of petty sessions where there was a lot of the rough and tumble type atmosphere that no, others have described? Days. I spent quite a lot of time in the courts of petty sessions. Was that, what did you find about those? So I, I was told about trial by ambush, for example, that happened to some people when they went to the courts of petty sessions. Did that ever happen to you? No, I don't, I don't think so. Um, uh, I mean, a lot of the work I did in petty sessions was landlord and tenant work. And I do that down at central court or in suburban courts. Um, and then I did higher purchase work also in the petty sessions courts um, and a variety of other cases, some, some criminal cases or quasi-criminal cases, um, industrial relations cases. Uh, that's by and large the kind of work I did in petty sessions courts. With hindsight, would you have liked to have done more in the area of criminal law? Not really. I mean, criminal law does interest me, but uh, I would always prefer to do, uh, say, a public law case or a commercial case to a criminal law case. Now, that partly associated with the fact I did very little jury work. Um, uh, Practically all the work I did was before a judge or a magistrate. Um, therefore, I, I wouldn't, I didn't feel uh, as much at home before a jury as I did before a judge or a magistrate. Were there notable judges during those years that you recall either fondly or, for that matter, you had great difficulty with? Um, well, uh, um, yes, there's one judge I recall. Uh, with affection, and that was Charles McClelland, who was who became the Chief Judge in Equity. I had a very high regard for him. Uh, I mean, he was a lecturer in company law when I was a student at the university, and curiously enough, I was introduced to him by my uncle, uh, with whom Charles McClelland was appearing as a junior in 1944... Um, on the eve of my going to Canada because I went up to say, see my uncle and say goodbye to him on a Sunday evening and he was there working with Charles McClelland as his junior and I was introduced to him on that occasion. And uh, I recall the occasion well um, and I appeared probably more frequently before him than any other judge uh, and he was a pleasure to appear before. What about Frederick Myers, who was known as Funnel Web Freddy? Um, well, he was difficult. Um, he, he was difficult to appear before, and uh, I can't say that you would find it an enjoyable experience because he generally was on the lookout for something wrong with your case. And once he decided there was something wrong with your case, it was rather difficult to dislodge that notion from his mind. Um, but uh, altogether, I don't think I uh, fared too badly before uh, Myers. Um, he was, in one sense, an unpredictable, but I suppose in another sense, a very predictable judge. But uh, he, he, he'd suddenly take a, a view about some question in the case which you had not regarded as a particularly important question, and it would, it would then become... Uh, a, an important question. And then you had to do some fast thinking. That's right, yes. Mm. You, you were saying before about um, mostly appearing before judges or magistrates and not necessarily so much before juries. To your mind, the main advantages of doing that were what? Because the way I ask, I suppose, is um, some I've interviewed have said that the advantage as they saw it as of appearing before juries is that you were effectively on show and um, they felt that brought out the best in them as, as advocates. So by contrast, appearing just before a judge or magistrate, what did you feel that mostly sharpened? Uh, well, I can understand people saying that. Uh, after all, the great advantage of appearing before a jury is that juries can't ask questions. You're appearing before a judge, a judge can and does ask questions. And therefore, 
the judge is likely to identify difficulties in your case and therefore you are in a position of having to respond to them. So appearing before a judge, in my view, is a greater challenge uh, to your intellectual capacity, to your agility of mind, than appearing before a jury. Very interesting that you say that. And I imagine that was much on your mind many years later when you became a judge yourself. I think so, yes. You did some lecturing as well at the University of Sydney, I understand. When did that begin? Uh, probably about 1959 or 1960, when I became lecturer in equity. Were you approached by the law faculty at that time? Yes. And uh, did you accept that with alacrity, or did you have to be talked into it because you were too busy no, at no, that no. point? No, I uh, accepted that enthusiastically. And you found that the, having the academic string to your bow worked well with your actual practice? I'm not altogether sure about that. Um, uh, certainly the lectures were between five and six in the evening, so it was possible to handle the lectures and the pra one's practice at the same time. But, of course, um, five and six is the end of the day, uh, and... Uh, in, it would have been better for the students, I think, if I was lecturing earlier in the day. Um, but uh, I can't say that it presented any difficulty. Did it start in your own mind a desire to write more or to, if you like, form some sort of cornerstone of your eventual philosophy with yes, regard I, to the I, practice I of law? So. Yes. Um, yeah, it did generate a desire to write about the law. So with that in mind, did you contemplate doing more in the way of perhaps publications and the like, or did you think, no, look, I'll leave that for later on and uh, just continue as I am? Uh, well, I thought uh, while I was practising at the bar, I was too busy to uh, actually write. That's what I found. Um, and in any event, throughout my life in the law, I've generally found myself so occupied that I couldn't write a textbook, all I could do would be to write articles on specific topics. Did you even so find you were becoming a bit of a specialist and people were looking to you for your opinion about various matters? Uh, yes. Well, of course, um, I found myself doing a lot of equity work, particularly in uh, specific fields like... Um, reduction of capital applications and I became I found myself doing more and more company work uh, and less commercial work uh, but at the same time I started to do more constitutional work I'd always done a bit of constitutional work and uh, I did more administrative law work.